When you think of Darius Geis, you might think of talent completely wasted. He went from a superstar running back at LSU to completely out of the league a few years later. But it's more complex than that. With that being said, this is the story of Darius Geis. Darius Geis grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Unfortunately, it was one of the most crime-filled areas and poor areas of the city. As a kid, he showed signs of insane athleticism at a young age. His dad once told him that he would be the football player in the family. He had dreams of playing for LSU as a kid and he was close with his dad. Then one evening when Darius was only 5 years old, his father passed away. He had been shot at a local restaurant in Baton Rouge. This was really hard for Darius as he no longer had a father to look up to. Growing up he got into trouble at times and had a rough time keeping himself straight. However, he played football for his father and for his hardworking mother. His mother accepted a scholarship that would let Darius play football at Catholic High because she wanted to give him the best opportunity in life. He struggled to get along at first with the kids at his school, but he became close friends with a guidance counselor and she helped him tremendously. The two of them had a special bond, but one day the school told her that she had to limit any relations with Darius to in school, during school hours. Shockingly, she resigned. I don't know why she did it, but it's very interesting nonetheless. Meanwhile, on the football field, Darius was tearing it up. He rushed for over 1,300 yards and 21 touchdowns during his senior year at Catholic High, and he was getting scouted at a high level. Darius was a five-star recruit coming out of high school and was the nation's number two ranked running back. Geist got offers from a lot of schools, including LSU, Alabama, Louisiana Tech, and Texas. He ultimately chose LSU to fulfill his childhood dream and the promise he made to his dad before he passed away. Things were looking promising for Darius. He just got out of high school and was now on LSU, one of the country's best football teams. Geis was the backup to Leonard Fournette, another LSU player, in his freshman year, and he managed 436 yards and three scores. During his sophomore season, he started as the backup to Fournette yet again. But when Fournette went down with an injury, Darius Geis started rolling. He finished with nearly 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns, averaging 7.6 yards per carry. His production met the expectations for his five-star recruit. And after that sophomore season, he already had buzz from fans across the country. Things were looking good for him, as Leonard Fournette was entering the 2017 NFL Draft and Geis would be the true starter as a junior. He went on to have a great junior season, and he declared for the 2018 NFL Draft. There was a lot of hype for him during the months leading up to the draft. Many analysts and scouts predicted him to go in the middle of the first round. The days led up to draft day, and nobody knew where Darius would go, but he was a consensus first round pick. Then the day of the draft came. However, things did not go to plan. Darius didn't hear his name called at all on day one. 32 teams passed on him and drafted other running backs like Rashad Penny. Teams continued to select other running backs in the second round until Washington decided to draft him at 59th overall in the second round. It was later revealed that he dropped in the draft due to concerns about his immaturity and verbal altercations. Geis hadn't gotten in trouble with the law in a while now, but NFL teams still didn't like his character. Darius wasn't going to turn back though. He said it was a blessing to be drafted and he was ready to get to work. During the preseason of his rookie year with Washington, he tore his ACL. That's a really tough break for any rookie, and it slowed down his progression as a player. He missed the entire 2018 season with that injury. He tried to rebound the following year, but he tore his meniscus in week one. This was definitely starting to demotivate Darius. He came back and played his first full game later in the season. He showed flashes at the end of the season because of his talent. This was what Washington fans truly wanted when they heard his name called in the draft. But then he got injured again late in the season and his season was over. By this point, there were reports that Darius wasn't taking rehab seriously and would show up late at times. It's a tough thing to go through, cycles of injuries and rehab endlessly, but Darius was getting frustrated. After the 2019 season, he said, I want to play, I want to be healthy. What frustrates me is always talking about it. I'm tired of talking about it. During the off season, we didn't hear much from Darius when all of a sudden, things would get bad. During the summer of 2020, his girlfriend called for numerous accusations of domestic violence. After three separate calls, Darius was found guilty and arrested for domestic violence. The Washington football team released him the same day. He went to jail and was placed on bond and was let go after a day. 
However, only a week later he was pulled over for driving recklessly, driving 90 miles an hour in a 50 mile an hour zone. Darius was just out of his mind at this point. And as it currently stands, his trial was set by his lawyers to June 1st of 2021 which is less than a month from when this video is being published. So we'll have to see what happens there, and unfortunately it's safe to say that he will never play football in the NFL ever again. His story ended in a sad way, and it really shows that football can't be used as a fix for mental health, or as an escape of reality. This is the end of Darius Geis' path as a football player, and I know a lot of people can learn from it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.